Hi, today we are going to have a consolidated revision. We are going to have a consolidated revision. And we are going to revise on area. We are going to revise on area. And the first area that we are going to deal with is the area of quadrilaterals. The area of quadrilaterals. And you know, as you know, that a quadrilateral is a four sided figure. Four sided figure. So a quadrilateral is a four sided figure. So uh, here we are going to deal with area of five figures. We are going to deal with the area of a rectangle, area of a square, pareogram, rhombus, and we end with a trapezium. So uh, we have four quadrilaterals, as I have mentioned. So the first one we are going to deal with is the area of a rectangle. The area of a rectangle. A rectangle is a quadrilateral with four sides. Two opposite sides are equal. So it has uh, two pairs of op, uh, two pairs of parallel sides. So it has this length and this is also length. This is width and this is also width. So it has two pairs of parallel lines. Two lengths and two width. So area of a rectangle area of a rectangle is given by area of a rectangle is given by length times width area of a rectangle is length times width so length is the longest side and the width is the shortest side so in our case our length is 15 in our case our length is 15 centimeters and our width is 10 centimeters. So we multiply by 10 centimeters. When you multiply this one, you get an area 150 square centimeters. And that is our answer. So the area is length times width. That is one, uh, 15 times 10. You get 150 square centimeters. We move on. We move on. So below that, we have a square. A square is a four-sided figure whose all sides are equal. Hmm? All sides are equal. This side is equal to this one, is equal to this one, is equal to this one. So in a square, all the four sides are equal. So to get the area of a square, to get the area of a square, to get the area of a square, uh, we say side times side we multiply side times side area is side times side because they are equal so because all the sides are equal this is the same as saying side squared this is the same as saying side squared so in our case each side is 21 because of, as we have said before, is that all the sides are equal. So if this one is this is 21, this one is also 21, this one is also 21. So here is 21, this is 21, this is 21. And it is also good to note that a square is shown by this much. When you, whenever you see uh, it has this stroke here, a stroke here, a stroke here, and another one here, it means that that is a square. And also that all the sides are equal. So when you are given one side, so it, it's like you are given all the sides, the other sides. So here you just say side squared. So here you are going to say area is equals to 21 times 21. The, uh, the measurement are in centimeters. Therefore, when you multiply 21 times 21, you get 441 square centimeters. So that is the area of that square. That is the area of that square. So we move on. We move on to the area of a pareogram. Area of a pareogram. So a pareogram is another four-sided figure uh, which looks like a, a twisted rectangle. It looks like a twisted rectangle. When you look the shape of a rectangle here 
and the shape of the parallelogram, you understand that it was just a rectangle that was pressed on the upper side to get another shape, which we call a parallelogram. So in a parallelogram, we get area using the formula, which is not the same as the rectangle, using the formula area equals to base length, base length times height. In a rectangle, we say base length times height. Base length is the one that is denoted by letter B. So letter B here shows us the base length. And it is also good to note that opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal. So this one, this side denoted with B is equal to this other side denoted with 16 centimeters. Okay? As well as this side is also equal to this other side, the opposite side. So in a parallelogram, uh, it has two pairs of parallel lines. And the opposite sides are equal. Therefore, what does it mean? This 16 here, it also means that here the base is also 16. Okay? So, uh, it is also good to note that uh, this is the height. Height must be perpendicular to the base length. Height has to be perpendicular to the base length. At times, the, ex uh, the examiner or the teacher can give you height 6 centimeters and he also gives you the other one like he tells you this is 10 centimeters. It is, all, it is good to use the perpendicular height. Are we together? So in area, you use perpendicular height. You don't use slanting height. So here we are going to use this 6 and the base length 16. So area is going to be 16 times 6. 16 times 6. All the measurements are in centimeters. Therefore, when you multiply 16 times 6, you get your area 96 square centimeters. You get 96 square centimeters. So that is the area of that parallelogram. We move on. But before we move on, it is good to uh, differentiate between a parallelogram and a rhombus. A parallelogram and a rhombus. A rhombus uh, has all the sides equal. It is also good to note that a, a, a rhombus, in a rhombus, is like just a square that was pressed at the top to make another to take another shape. So a rhombus is like a square that was pressed at the top to make another shape. But all the sides in a rhombus are equal. So this is a rhombus. All the sides are equal. Okay? So in a rhombus, in a rhombus, area is given by area is given by a uh, diagonal 1 times diagonal 2 or divided by 2. In a rhombus, we use diagonals. So you're given diagonal 1. Diagonal 1 can be the longest diagonal and diagonal 2 can be the shortest diagonal. So we simply multiply the diagonals and then we divide by 2. So here we are supposed to say uh, because our first diagonal is 20 centimeters, the other one is 15. So we are supposed to say 20 centimeters times 15 centimeters or divided by 2. That is how we, uh, we work out the rhombus, the area of a rhombus. And for this matter, we can simplify before we multiply by 2, 1 by 2, 10. So 10 times 15, you get 150. 150 square centimeters. So that is the area of that rhombus. We have said that the area of a rhombus is given by diagonal 1 times diagonal 2 divided by 2. So that is how simply we get the area of a rhombus. Let us move on. Let us move on. So I have told you that we have five condylaterals and uh, now our last condylateral is a trapezium. It's a trapezium. 
our last contralateral is a trapezium. And as you know, the plural of the word trapezium is trapezia. The plural of the word trapezium is trapezia. So when there are many, we say trapezia. We don't say trapeziums. We say trapezia. So in uh, trapezium, uh, trapezium, to get the area, to get the area, to get the area, we say, uh, we use the formula half in bracket A plus B times height. We use that formula half A plus B times height. A and the B are the two parallel lines. The two parallel lines. You understand that a trapezium has got one pair. It has a pair of parallel lines. So this line is parallel to this one. But this one and this one are not parallel. Therefore, it has only one pair of parallel lines. So we have said A stands for the first uh, line. Then B is the other parallel lines. So this one and this one. This is, we have said this is A and this is B. H is the perpendicular height. Are we together? So we, when we divide the trapezium here, this side and this one is going to be the same. So this 10 here is also this one. So 10 here, 10 here. So this 20, this is 15. So we are going to work out our area. We are going to say it's equals to half, half times in bracket. We are going to put 20 plus 15. 20 plus 15. Then we multiply with our height, which is 10. Our height, which is 10. All the measurements are in centimeters. So this one translates it to, this one translates it to, uh, we can simplify by 2, 1, by 2, 5. This one translates it to 5 outside the bracket. Then we have uh, 20 plus 15, you get 35. Like that. Okay. So when we open the bracket, we should multiply. And we should say 35. 35 times 5. So we say this is 5 times 5 is 25. And 5 times 3 is 15. Plus 2, you get 17. So our area for that matter is 175, 175 square centimeters. 175 square centimeters. That is our area of the trapezium that we have there. So uh, we have worked out the area of condylaterals. We have said in condylaterals we only have five of them. We have a rectangle, we have a parallelogram, we have a square, we have a rhombus, and the, the last one is the trapezium. So we move on to area of a circle, area of a circle, area of a quarter circle, and the area of a, I have a circle which we also call semi circle. Okay? We are going to begin with the area of a circle. So, in area of a circle is given by the formula pi r squared. Pi r squared. Okay? So, whereby pi is a constant. Pi is a constant. It is 22 over 7. 22 over 7 or or what 3.14 so pi is a constant for that matter it is 2 22 over 7 or uh, 3.14 r stands for radius radius that is a the line that originates from the center of the circle is the one that we call radius. Line that originates from the center of the circle to one side of the circle, we call it radius. 
So we can move on to get the area. We can move on to get the area. We're going to say that area of this circle is given by area of this circle is given by uh, we are going to say uh, for our case uh, because the radius is a multiple of 7 we are going to use the pi 22 over 7 okay so in the cases where the radius is not a multiple of 7 we use the radius 3.14 but we change the uh, the decimal number 3.14 to a fraction to become 314 of 100 but for our case we have said the radius is a multiple of 7 so we are going to use 22 over 7 so we are going to say area is 22 over 7 times radius radius which is 14 times 14 why are we saying 14 times 14 because of the square R squared means R times R. And we have said R stands for radius, which is 14. So we can move on. We say by 7, 1. By 7, 2. So we have 22 times 2. That is 44. Uh, 44. 44 times 14. This one gives... Um, it gives us 616. Let's see for four. So this one gives us uh, six hundred and sixteen. So our area is six hundred and sixteen square centimeters. That is how we work out the area of a circle. We say pi r squared. Pi we have said is a constant twenty-two over seven or as a decimal. 3.14 r stands for radius that is the line that originates from the center the center if that line that passes through the center goes or divides the circle into two then we call it a diameter i mean if the circle crosses the center and it divides the circle into two we call it a, a diameter which is denoted by letter d so this is diameter diameter so we move on from that we are going to work out the area of a quarter circle area of the quarter circle we are just going to say area is equal to a quarter pi r squared we are starting with a quarter just because it is a quarter of a circle when you divide a circle into four you get quarters. One of them we call it a quarter. So when you are getting the area, you just start with a quarter because its shape is just a quarter of a circle. Okay? So uh, the meaning of pi and r is as I've discussed in the circle there. So we are just going to say a quarter or 1 over 4 times 22 over 7 times the radius in our case is 7. So we say 7 times 7. Okay? So we say divide 7 by 7, you get 1. 7 by 7, you get 1. So we have by 2, 2. By 2, 11. So we have 11 times 7. 11 times 7 is 77. When you divide by this 2 here, you get 38.5. 38.5. 38 square centimeters so that is the area of the quarter circle there so we have said in a quarter circle uh, these two these two sides are, are equal this one and this one are equal in a quarter circle i have said this one and this side are equal because they are equal to radius the center of the circle when it is full is here where we have the 90 degrees okay so we move on to a semicircle. Semi means half. Semi means half. So when it is a semicircle, we are just going to say area is half pi r squared. We are going to say half pi r squared. Why are you starting with half? Because we have said it is half a circle, which is 
we, where we have said that semi means half. So semi means half. That is where we are starting with half. Okay. So we are going to say half times 22 over 7 times the radius. In our case, the radius is 21 times 21 times 21 like that. So we say by 7, 1, by 7, 3. By 2, 1, by 2, 11. Okay? So we say 11 times 3. You get that 3. So you say that 3 times 21. This one gives you that 3 here. And then 66. So this one is the same as 693 square square centimeters. So the area of that semicircle there is 693 square centimeters. Okay. The last area that we are going to work on is area of three quarter circle. Three quarter circle. I have told you that when you divide a circle into four you get quarters so this is three quarter these are three quarters of a circle as you can see so I'm showing you so it was a full circle then one of the quarter was removed this one this quarter was removed so we have this is the first one second third fourth so one is removed so how many quarters they remain three out of the total number so when you are getting the area, it is just going to be area pi, uh, that is a, a, a 3 over 4, pi r squared. You are just going to use 3 over 4 pi r squared. And uh, you know where 3 over 4 comes from. It is because the shape is 3 quarters of a circle. So we say, we go on, we say 3 over 4 times 22 over 7 times radius in our case is 42. So we say 42 times 42. All the measurements are in centimeters, so we don't have to worry. <clears throat> we say by 2, 2, by 2, 11. Okay? By 2, 1, by 2, uh, we get 21. Okay? So we are remaining with 3 times 11 3 times 11 you get 33 33 then 33 times 21 times 21 here you get 33 like that okay you can move on on this one that 3 then times 2 again you get 60 6 so this is 6 93 then we model with 42 42 this one we get 6 this is 18 that one this is 12 13 then we have 12 we have that is 6 that is 7 then we have uh, 27 so this is 6 0 uh, this is 11, 11, 9, and then 2. So our area of the circle becomes 29, 29, 0, 6. Uh, that is a, there is one here, 20, uh, 29,106 square centimeters. That is the area. So, uh, we are going to stop there today. Tomorrow we are going to work out the areas of combined shapes. Areas of combined shapes. So if it is your first time, uh, make sure you subscribe. You press on the subscribe button there so that you will be updated whenever I post a new video. Make sure you follow and you comment. Thank you.